Good morning from Luxembourg. This is a great day. I'm super excited. Bon dia. Uh, bon dia, bon dia. I need coffee. Yes. Espresso? Oui, oui. oui. <laughs> so I'm staying here at Hotel de Brau. It's part of the brewery, the national brewery, Brasserie Nationale, no? Espresso? Espresso. Doppio. Longo. 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 I love it. All my friends here from Portugal. So we're talking in the Palamo Portuguese. Si. Sí. <laughs> Una grande? Yes. Si? Sí. Yo pensé que no podemos. No, no podemos, pero te do una. He's gonna, he's gonna pour for me a glass. Así so, puedes acordar un poco. This is the oldest brewery in the country. Uh, Brasserie Nacional, oh, oldest brewery. Bofedering Luxembourg. So this is their pills. Mmm. Nice. Aquí. Okay. Muchas it's like espresso or cerveza. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm, and this is Batin or Bofferding? So there's two brands, Bofferding and Batin. Okay. It's part of the Brasserie Nacional, yeah. right? Nice crips, pills, 4.8%. And he's going to pour another one. Wow. For you. So this is the two different yes, brands is. of the brewery. Hmm, it's different. See, si, different. Yeah. So what is this? Oh, this is a blonde, and this is a pils. So this is a little stronger. I didn't know I was gonna be drinking at nine in the morning, but <laughs> it's okay. I guess we'll sit down. Uh, let's relax. It's gonna be a great day. One hundred country. What a journey. You know, when I was planning this trip, I was like, I'm going to Belgium, I have to do Luxembourg and Belgium together. Uh, that's like always been my plan for a very, very long time. I don't know when I was gonna get there, um, but yeah, it's late June in uh, 2023, and we're here enjoying some beer. And by the way, they don't serve beer earlier than noon. They did that for me literally for camera so I can show you guys what their beers are like, but we're gonna go on a beer tour anyways. Right across the street, we have Brasserie National, which is the national beer of the country uh, since 1937. Blonde, whoa, so good. And then we're going. I'm waiting for Marina. Marina is the Lux Life. So this is Marina, the Luxembourg Life. She also has the Lux Life clothing or products. Yeah, so we're just waiting for her. So when she gets here, we're gonna go on a tour and explore this entire country. Well, the country's very small. It's like one city. There's also a few other towns, medieval castles. I mean, there's there's stuff. There's actually wineries as well. So you have a lot to do here. You can easily do three days in Luxembourg. But we're spending today and most of tomorrow before we head out. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm just waiting and then we'll go. Cheers. We're meeting with Marina. Marina is the owner of a blog called The Luxembourg Life. She's right here and we also have our guide, Eric, who's gonna take us through the brewery. Eric, how you doing? Hello. You good? You're good. Almost uh, too early for me in the morning. But too early for you? <laughs> Saturdays. <laughs> uh, so what are we doing? Uh, well, I'm going to take you around to the, um, the brewery. I'm going to show you that how real beer is made. Uh, real beer? Yeah. Because uh, you can uh, divide most beers into twos, actual beers, and uh, some kind of beer-like substance that is done in 90 hours. We do it the traditional way here. and. Uh, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Very good. So this is Marina at Luxembourg Life and Marina's going to take us on this tour and she's also going to join us in the city. Ready? Yeah, come through. Let's go. Wow, it's amazing. And this building is 250 years old? Like yes. Uh, last time renovated in 1992. That's the equipment and also the, the knowledge. It's uh, 250 years old, roughly. History is quite a bit complicated. But, wow. uh, so we went to a few of the breweries in Belgium, but this is like massive. Look at these <coughs> vats. How many beers do you make per day? I mean, how does that work? If we are going full blast, we can make uh, five batches and each batch is 25,000 liters. So gets you 125,000 liters of beer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so they have three brands, but they also have like 11 beers, that, other beers that you make that you can only drink them here in Luxembourg. And outside they have a counter and it shows you how many beers have been sold in Luxembourg, uh, these beers have been sold in Luxembourg, I think it's like 24 million so far. So that's an original stained glass from 250 years ago. They've looked after it very well. Um, but yeah, it's, the, it's from a long time ago. 
the national beer of the country. Yeah. And they've been in business for over 250 years. This place is great. Huge, guys. Massive. These tanks, insanity. And by the way, guys, we're staying at the hotel across the street, and that's their hotel. It's called De Brau. I guess we're working off the calories before we drink the beer. Yeah, mm. the hop and the malt, so we're going to check out the ingredients. Let's do it. Over here we have wheat or barley. Mostly barley. Barley. So, presented a few uh, malts we have uh, during production. And uh, to keep a long story short, the main difference between different kinds of malt is the heat treatment they get. So uh, if you look at a Pilsner here or a Pale Ale, these are heat treated very gently. We're talking roughly 80 degrees centigrade. Um, and for example, the Münchner, which is in our uh, Batagang Rinus, this one is uh, at 125 degrees. So you can uh, increase the temperatures until you arrive at uh, roughly 300 degrees for a proper roasted malt how you find them in a stout, for example. So, and then I've divided those into three. Uh, in the middle there are the um, Cara molds. Cara comes from caramelizations. These are uh, treated a bit differently. And again, what makes beer? Wheat, malt, hops, and water. For so uh, if you really want to go for the minimum, it's just uh, barley malt, hops, yeast, and water. And that's uh, all we do here as well. We only have those four ingredients. It's the hops we use in uh, pellets form, we, but uh, basically we use these two traditional ones, uh, Hala Tower Perle and Tetnanga, and all the other ones come from the United States, so uh, thanks America, good stuff from there. We learned about the malt, the hops, we saw the pipeline, mini museum, and now we're making our way to the tasting room. We're going to try like 11 beers, and then we'll eat. Bufferding. Oh look, this is the history, right? So old school bottles. Bravo. They were telling me a majority of the beer is exported, roughly 51%. Woo! It is hot. Yes, very much so. Uh, greenhouse effect, that's the word I was looking for. So, uh, large windows, large pump. Oh my God, it is huge, so hot. This is where all the beer is made. So much beer. If they sold 26 million bottles so far this year, they're gonna sell like 50 million in a year. Woo! Right here, we have massive water reserve tanks. If you guys don't know, most of beer is water. So, this is where they reserve their water. Huge. Oh my gosh, you gotta be really, really careful. Let's go, let's continue. Here we have an uh, illustration how we uh, increased our efficiency with the uh, water consumption. Basically, when I was uh, but a wee lad, uh, we used 12 bottles of water to make one bottle of beer out of it. Now we are at two and a half, so uh, you have to imagine a small bottle over here. The first one should be apparent, that's uh, one bottle of beer. And this is uh, all we need for cleaning, whereas way back when it was uh, 11 bottles. This achieved, we achieved with uh, computerized cleaning. Basically, the computer doesn't waste a drop and uh, with the uh, sewage treatment plant. So uh, we reuse our cleaning water. Now I need to stress, cleaning water and brewing water, they are kept separate. This is like how ice oh, yeah. is responsible. This is amazing. So, they also have a water brand? You guys make their own water? The well is owned by Nanli. Oh. How deep is it, Eric? Uh, 317 meters. The well? Yeah. And that's, uh, st you start counting at the rock. So uh, probably a few more extra meters, depending on how you measure. That's awesome. The government uses this water to test whether or not the, water, the tap water is drinkable. So this is the measure of like the cleanest water. So it goes straight from the ground into the bottles. It doesn't see any daylight or air until you open it and drink it. And that's why the beer is so good, because the water is delicious. There we go. In order to even say that, it needs to um, have been, from all these years, naturally uh, processed through rocks, not by man. So the thing they were able to measure in 2019 was uh, the last time this stuff was in uh, contact with the uh, Earth's atmosphere. And they found out that that was uh, 30,000 years ago. There was an ice age, meaning there was no farming, almost no animals and that uh, uh, led to there no being uh, any pollutants in the, uh, in the water that drained down over the thousands of years. Ready? Yeah, I'm actually a water snob, so. You're a water snob. Mm. It tastes different. Right? It tastes like, just like pure. It's so fresh. And everyone says water's water, that's not true. That's not true. That is not true, so you can actually taste the difference in water. Yeah, you know, so I've, my favorites are like Fiji or Zephyr Hills, but this is like another level mm -hmm. of purity. Mm -hmm. oh. Especially ice cold. Yes. This is an amazing room, by the way. Yeah. Do this tour. This is, <laughs> this is great. This is the bottling area, huge. Damn. Are you guys bottling now? No, right? Uh, 
nothing happening, but it's massive. It's like a million kegs. Basically our warehouse, it's a, a small warehouse, but still here are the uh, empty kegs and bottles that are waiting for, um, for being filled. And then uh, during production days, we have five, six trucks that come by and we put the uh, production immediately on the trucks and off to our distribution center it goes. Kegs do you think we got here? Oof, that idea thousands, idea. thousands. That idea, I know. It but doesn't I, end. You know what we should do? Because do you think you could lift a, a keg? Oh, I can lift a keg. You can lift a keg, yeah. right? It's 300 beers, right? One keg, 300 beers? Did you know that the secret of good beer is the water? Like, yeah. A lot of people didn't know that, so. I'm surprised because like 99% of it is water. Yes. So the yeah. best water in the world makes yeah. the best beer. There we go. This is amazing. 44,000 liters of beer. These are gigantic beer cans. What? Huge. We're almost at the end of the tour and we're gonna try one of the freshest beers you can get. Only two days old. Here we go. Wow. This is an uh, unfiltered buffeting pills. It's going to have a lot more character to it due to the yeast that's still in there. Wow. Yeah, I think unfiltered beer is the best, especially when it comes directly from the brewery, like in here. Mm -hmm. Nothing like it. Thank you. Here we go. Everybody want a glass? Yeah, it's like, why not, bro? <laughs> it's about time. Thank you. You become an expert in pouring beer, huh? I know. <laughs> that's actually pretty yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I drank a lot in my days. Oh, but Normally the foam is no good, but you did a good job. From my understanding, it was like a, an inch of head. Yes. Post. 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 Oh, he wanted it once? He needed it. It's really good. It's, it's fresh. It's really good. And it's ice cold. Yeah. It's so good. It's so fresh. Oh, I can have another. That's nice. But we're going to drink more later. I'll wait a little bit. Do you want one? <laughs> well, that stuff is dangerous. I do it uh, every time I have a tour. So yeah. every time I pull one too many, oh no, what do I do? And then I, I drink it. So. <laughs> this guy's a character. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hey, cross, cross. <laughs> mm. It's a good one. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. You can't get better than that. What do we have here? Well, uh, this is a uh, distilled beer. Basically, if you know the Italian grappa or brandy, uh, you take a beer, or in case of brandy, you take wine and you distill it up, in, the, in our case, to uh, 42%. So the joke is always you shouldn't drink a beer on the cold stomach. So. Uh, that's how we heat it up here. <laughs> oh my god. So this is their version of grappa? Yep. But made with beer. Yeah. So it's different. It's not with grapes. It's like Chinese baijiu. What were we talking about before? Oh, it's like Chinese oh, baijiu. Yes. This is what it tastes a bit like. Oh, it's gonna yeah. be tough. It's gonna be a tough one. Yeah. We'll try it, we'll try it. Here we go. Hey, cross, cross. Cross, cross, cross. Smooth. It is smooth. It's smooth. <laughs> It makes it a bit lighter or easier to drink because it's malt based, so it should remind you of whiskey, but uh, due to the hops, it makes it a bit more flowery, a bit more fruity. They make it brandy more vodka. Some people say that, yeah. Okay. Uh, to me, it's a bit too early for brandy vodka. Okay, we need food in our stomachs. Never too early, right? Never too early. Never too early to drink. So this is the tasting room where you'll see an original piece um, of machinery from 250 years ago. So let's taste some beers. Man, how many beers are we tasting right now? Uh, five, and since I'm in a good mood, we might be able to do a sixth one. Come on this tour, he's too funny. <laughs> ah, a bit much. <laughs> a bit much? A bit. It's never a bit much. Pilsner, yeah, the one you've tasted before, uh, just this time it's a bit as well. Yeah, it's filter. No, the unfiltered way better. Way better. <laughs> It's stronger too, right? The unfiltered? It's the same, but strictly speaking, because there's a tad less uh, solid matter in there. One, this is a uh, Merzen, which is a German tradition beer, basically an Oktoberfest beer. Slightly oh, maltier, slightly hop hoppier. There we go. This was your personal favorite? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is it my personal favorite? Let's go. Yeah, it's like a darker beer. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> Take a time. So here's the next one. This is a, uh, well, we call it a blonde. Basically means uh, a pale ale, so it's not very defined. It's our um, organic beer. It's uh, quite sweet, meaning there's uh, comparatively much malt in there and little hops, so easy to drink, good refreshing beer. So this is our uh, Fritte 
Uh, it's uh, basically a pale ale again, mixed with uh, fruit juice. And the idea behind it here is uh, it's a pulse for your liver. Oh, I love it. Nice, super fruity. Ooh, good stuff. So all these are batin? Yes. So this is uh, Batin Brun, which is a German book beer style. Way back when they brewed this in the medieval ages, made it very strong, so it would still be fresh in the winter. Oh, sorry. By the way, if you guys don't know, this is my favorite, brown, brown ales. Oh, it's the best one. 7.2? <laughs> Il y a trois. Et oui. Et de Bordeaux, en bas de la France, ah, Bordeaux, où il y a Bordeaux. le vin. Oh. Ça c'est ma grand-mère. Et ici, c'est mes parents ici. Ici. Voilà. Uh. I just know Bordeaux has some amazing wines. <laughs> fromage et cheese. Ça c'est fromage à la bière Bofferding. La bière d'ici. La sauce bière Bofferding. Là c'est les galettes de pommes de terre. Galettes de pommes de terre fait maison. Là on a une aumônière avec des légumes provençales. Ça c'est une ratatouille. Fais maison. Ratatouille. Tu mets la ratatouille dedans, ça tu fermes, direct au four. Ok The potato pancakes are completely homemade. So everything grated, it's a lot of work, but he's saying that the grand is homemade. Yeah. Viande de veau, fromage batin, champignons. Comment on dit champignons bah, 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 Champignons. Ah, voilà, parfait. Jambon. Jambon. So hands, like voilà. Direct au four. Et là, 8 minutes. Bien croustillant. Oh, the sauce. It's for me. Ça va? Et toi, ça va? We love this guy. Ça, c'est spare ribs comme en Amérique. Sauce barbecue. Fais maison. Fais maison. Wow. It looks so good. Yes, exactly. Wow. Good. Crazy. Ça, je comprends ça. Ça, c'est l'orlove de veau. Grand paquet chercheur. Aumônière provençale. Une réduction de jus de veau à la bière. Wow. Let's go. To eat this food, Luxembourgish food looks amazing. Highly influenced by Germany. Of course, we're right next door. And whoa, we also have some cold cuts, some uh, cheese. This is, this is typical Luxembourgish. So I have the, the cold meat, oh, wow. the salami, uh, prosciutto, and then you have a beer uh, cheese, goat cheese, and pan de pis. It's a typical bread with uh, spices and honey. You ready? Ready. So what have we got? So this is a vine sausage, and you might already have had sausages and mashed potato before. Actually, in England we have bangers and mash. Mm -hmm. But the thing that makes it Luxembourgish is this mustardy sauce. Wow. So you need to try that. And this is an Orloff, which has beer cheese, like as in beer cheese, cheese made from beer, um, ham, and then a reduced uh, veal sauce. Um, this is like a vegetable parcel. This is the Grompa Kishisha. Mm. Like a Jewish latke. Latke, It's lakka. like a Jewish latke. I thought um, laksa because she's Malay. Malay. Yeah, and we do have laksa. There's nothing like laksa here, unfortunately. Got um, it. This is a charcuterie platter. Um, cold cuts and cheese. Um, and then ribs, which are not just Luxembourgish, but wow. you can find those everywhere. But these are great. And this is a pork joint, which is very Germanic, um, because there's a lot of German influence in Luxembourgish cuisine. We like to say that it's um, French quality with German quantity, so. Got it. Yeah. So it's delicious, but you get a lot of it. There we go. Right, and this is the most traditional of the yes. Luxembourgish dishes that here. That and that. Then we start with those two. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Thank you. No problem. Look at this. Ooh. This looks so good. It's almost like a cordon bleu. Yes. It does look like it, yeah. Yeah? Let's just dive into all the food. Yeah. Like, drench this in mustard. This one I'm eating straight. Mm. The mustard, nice and dense. Oh, I love the chives on top. Like you said, very Germanic influence. Right here on the border with Germany. Mm. There's nothing like German sauces. This is Luxembourger stuff. I'm gonna have more. 
It's amazing though. It's super flavorful. Yeah. There's something in it. Yeah. So beer is in the cheese here. Cheese here. I guess we'll drive into one of these cheeses. And it's like it has a bit of spice that one. Yeah, it has like paprika. It almost looks like a manchego with paprika. Wow. No spice? It's good. So here in Luxembourg, very hearty meals. Yeah, so. How's the winter here? Um, the winters here are long, cold. Um, we get snow a lot. So this is the kind of food that you would traditionally like to eat. Cold cuts, obviously, we can have in the summer. Of course. Um, it's a very meat-heavy cuisine. Yeah. yeah. So my family's from Hungary. There, everything is like goulash and super, super big meals of meat. Because mm -hmm. you know? obviously winter, yeah. you have to. That's true. Actually, the weather dictates everything about the food, doesn't it? Of course. It? Yeah. This is so good. I love the cheese. The cheese? It's so good. Wow. That's the knuckle of the pork. Oh, I love the, the potatoes on the side. Mm. Yeah. They're nice and like crispy. Wow. What a piece it's of meat. really crispy. I mean, what you should do is just grab the whole thing and just bite, I was right? Gonna, I was yeah. Gonna say, that's yeah, yeah, no, for sure. But we're all sharing, so <laughs> that wouldn't be a disaster. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm super happy. I'm glad that we're sharing food here. Yeah, of course. So this is the Bouchera. Bouchera. Yeah. Bouchera. Bouchera. Wow, I love this one. So Bouchera actually translates as mouth of the queen. Mouth of the queen. And that's what that is, yeah. I don't actually know why it's called that, but that is what it's called. What makes the Luxembourg dish is the cheese. True. The cheese mixed with the uh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Small pieces of champignon. Do you like this every day? No way. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just for the winter. In winter, come here, have this food, drink some good beer, and freeze. It's like real comfort food, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And it, it washes down well with beer. This is the kind of food you need beer with. You know, say Red Bull gives you wings? Now beer does. <laughs> that joke, sorry. I love the brown. The brown's epic, epic. Oh, so I haven't tried the pork shoulder yet. It's funny, it reminds me of Germany. Like I'm literally yeah. in German land. Yeah. This is so crunchy usually on the outside. Oh, it's the best part. It's, it's so tender. So worth the calories. So it is. Worth the calories. This with the beer? Yeah. What a combo. Mm. And this one? That's that's Bushelleren, which means mouth of the queen. Mouth of the queen. Yeah. So it's like a pot pie. It is like a pot pie. It's actually my favorite dish in Luxembourg. Oh wow. Yeah, I love that. My daughter's left handed. So she holds her knife like that. Yeah, yeah, always. Look at that. But that Beautiful. Makes sense, but... Oh, I love this. Yeah. The crust, that breading. You got chives. What else do we have in here? Nice sauce. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. I think if this is your favorite, this is what I'm going to eat the most of. <gasps> so it's chicken pot pie. I think so. Oh, I love that creamy sauce. I can tell already it's going to be awesome. The best. Right? So good. I actually love these two the most. Yeah. The Luxembourg burger dishes? Wow. I know this sounds like so cringe, but for me, it's like this kind of food is like a hug. Mm hmm You know, like when you're having a really rough day, that's like a hug. It's a hug. And then after that, it's bed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, we got to do the ribs. Yes. I got to try it. This is not traditional Luxembourgish, but it's Germanic, right? Yeah. Pork ribs. Nice. Barbecue sauce, small. These are like, um, what do you call them? Baby back ribs. Baby back ribs. Baby back that ribs. Makes it worse. Every time the word baby is in, I just feel bad. <laughs> I know. Good? It's so good. Mmm, so <laughs> that sauce. Oh, it just falls apart. Mmm. Mm. Nice and glazy. Good combo. All right. I love talking, let's eat. I really love this food, by the way. Mark's schedule is crazy, right? He wakes up like 4 a.m. to work out. The only thing I don't like about He's not the way these guys uh, are promoting is that it's straight sale the whole time. Instead of just mean? being like, no, because like I do stories where I'm not selling my product. I'm just like showing a place, what I'm doing, just more like just real. Yeah. Every, every post of The Rock, every post of Mark Wahlberg now oh, is literally yeah. a sales pitch. Okay. 
but they're not using social media in the same way anymore. They, they're not putting themselves out there. You know, they're not using anything authentic about themselves anymore. Nothing. I mean, I think The Rock, the only thing he does authentic now is that he includes his kids, which is like shows like he's a dad, you know. Wow. You get full quick with this food. Mm -hmm. Hey, cheers. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. So, hey, I'm glad you came, man. No, nice I'm meeting glad. you. If you need yes. more beers, just cheers. shout. No, no. <laughs> and more beers, I'm going to bed. Um, I mean, it's time to see the city, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this, get on the tram. this is good. That's my favorite. Yeah. Are you filming on the tram as well? Because I do think this is the only country that has free transport. Mm -hmm. I think so. And what's this one called? That one? Is it like a meat oh, pie? It's a, a, no, it's a vegetable pasta. It's a vegetable. Let's see. This is really good too. Yeah. Mm. Very tender. It's all good. Tiramisu. Tiramisu. Yeah, tiramisu, but with beer. So for me from Italy, it's tiramisu and panna cotta. <laughs> tiramisu is going to take the cake. Or the beer, at least. This is the first time you're having tiramisu. Yeah. Oh, awesome. This is like a sin for Italians. They'd be like, what are you doing? You know, it's like when you put ketchup with pasta, you don't do that. Pineapples on pizza. No, no, no way. <laughs> this looks beautiful. I love the presentation. It's like nice and fluffy. No, you're good, bro. I have a huge mouthful. You do? Mm. The beer. So good. Whoa. So good. It is fantastic. Wow. You mean the whole thing? Are you? Of course. I'm not on a diet. I'm celebrating. I'm in my 100 country. Come on. Really? Yeah, I swear. That's, that should be a tagline. It is, right? Yeah, that mm -hmm. should be a tagline. That is. 100 countries. So what do you think? Beer, beer food, the best. Brasserie Nacional, you guys come to Luxembourg, you cannot come here without stopping at this place, try their beers, eat their food, and you will love it. One of the best dynamics I've ever had in my life. Brasserie Nacional. We spent a few hours eating, drinking, and now we're off to the city. So now we're driving away from Basharash, which is the south of the country, and it takes about 20 minutes or so to get into the heart of the city. Um, so it's very green now, but then suddenly you'll start to see like all the buildings and like the mid rises. I won't say high rises, we don't have those here. So the mid rises. So um, this is like, this. I've done the scenic route because we can also go through the motorway, but this is like a, a nicer way to see the country. The like city area has started now. We're now in Bertrand. You have a mall over there and you're gonna start to see more and more apartment buildings um, and newer built things. Um, and then once we pass that, we're gonna enter the old city, uh, which is built on the fortress. So you'll really notice when we enter. It's like a vision, very pretty place. This is one of the oldest banks in Luxembourg, Schwerke's Bank. So this is the Gar area. Gar means train station. Um, we have the main Luxembourg City train station over here and from here you can take the TGV straight to Paris, um, you can go to, take the train to Brussels and it's a pretty well connected train route um, but this would be like downtown of Luxembourg City. Alright so we're walking in Luxembourg City. Your Luxembourg is hot? Yeah for sure, Basile National. And, it's beautiful, uh, huh? Yeah, no, it's gorgeous. It's very well also like maintained, preserved, you can tell. Of course, the richest country in the world. <laughs> Highest country like a... GDP. GDP in the world? Highest country GDP. That's crazy. 600,000 people live here. Everybody's trilingual. Official languages are Luxembourgish, German, and French. And yeah, this is it. Train station. This is the only country in the world where transportation, public transportation is free. Well, except the train. The train to other countries, that's not free. This is free though. Let's go over here. It's great. I love your jersey, man. Where's it from? Egypt. Egypt. Nice. Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Where are you from? Luxembourg. You're Luxembourgish? Do yeah. you speak Luxembourgish? Yeah. How many languages do you speak? I feel like everybody's trilingual, right? This is the country yeah. that everybody's trilingual. I was raised in Italian and Luxembourg. Ah, my Italiano? 
Ah sì, anche il pro italiano? Un poco. Un poco, ok, va bene. E tutti, è che, tutti mi, mi guardano come che io sono pazzo. E cosa stai facendo? Ho un YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, we're doing a video about Luxembourg, about food, culture, you know, what you can do here. And yeah, I like this country. I mean, first day, I'm already drunk, man. No. Nah. Yeah, yeah. I'm joking, I'm joking, guys. Yeah. How long you stay here? Uh, two days. Right. Yeah, it's good enough, right? And where are you from? Uh, Germany. Germany? Uh, guten Morgen or guten, uh, guten Tag, right? Guten Tag? Guten Tag, yeah. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Uh, ich liebe dich. <laughs> you speak three languages too? No, just uh, German and English. German and English? Yeah. So no French or Luxembourgers? Nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Have you been to Aichen? Aichen, no. Aichen, no. yeah, it's right up here. It's one of the oldest cities in Germany. It's like next to the three country point. Oh, ah, okay. No. Yeah, we might go tomorrow, depending on time. Nice. Uh, What's the name of your channel? It's David's Been Here. All right. David's yeah. been here. No, I love the jersey, dude. I'm about to switch shirts with this guy. And where are you from? Where from you? Miami. Yeah, but mom, Italian, father, Hungarian. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, man, but this, is, this is cool. This is a cool thing. Free, huh? So you just can ride up and down all day. Yeah. It's great. I'm trying to talk to everybody. So <laughs> what, where are you from? Yeah. India. Namaskar. Namaste. I lived all my life on the east capital. Calcutta. Calcutta? Yeah. So West Bengal. Yeah. So you speak Bengali? Yeah. How many languages do you speak? So three or four Indian languages, there's like 30. And then how many, and then uh, what do you speak here? English, French. German? No. Luxembourgish? Not yet. Not yet? I feel like with like five days, you start learning everything. I'm trying to. You're trying to? Fantastic. Yeah. So everybody's foreigner. Like I saw, it's like statistically, it's like way more foreigners than, uh, than people from here. Okay. Okay. So off topic, because you're from India, Bani Puri or Biryani? Fuchka or Biryani? Fuchka or Martin Biryani? Fuchka! If you get down here, you would be able to see quite a lot of things here. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Shukriya, shukriya. All right, let's go. So this is the center, let's get off. Thank you, see you. Thank you, take care, bye. You too. First person you asked was Luxembourgish. Yes. <laughs> Mar Maria told us I challenge you to ask 10 people, none of them is going to be from Luxembourg. First person you ask, I'm, I'm Luxembourg. I'm Luxembourg. Well, he's Luxembourgish, but his grandparents came from somewhere else, right? So, yeah, well, it's usually the case. Yeah. Wow, that was awesome. Free. Then I'm charging to get on there. Thankfully. Now I'm going to go back to Greece and I'm going to have to pay for public transport. I'm spoiled now. No, of Luxembourg. course, of course. I mean, Again, this is the highest earning country in the world, GDP highest, so of course they're giving so everything free. This is Lux Life, and I thought Miami was rich. <laughs> and the first thing we're going to see in Luxembourg is the Pont Adolf. There's two layers under it, you can't see it from here, but there's a pedestrian area. This is the way in. This place is great, it feels amazing. It's so hot in summer, definitely come here now. Winter, they say it's way too cold. How many languages do you speak? So only French? Only French, yeah. In English? So-so. Uh, So-so? Yes. Okay. David, pleasure. What's up? What's nice up? to meet you. Yes. Okay. Everything good? Is it beautiful here? Yes, um, speak English. No, it's speaking English, speak French. Ah, you don't speak French. Spanish? Spanish. 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 Ah, ma la, la mamma? Sì, si, la mamma. Ah, no, io sono francese, ma capisco molto italiano. Ah, perfetto. Sì. Cosa fai? Eh, io ho un canale YouTube. Stiamo ah, facendo un video sopra sì, eh, questo, no? Questo, sì. Sì, per Luxemburgo. Eh, tu di qua o...? Sì, di qua, ma anche a Belgica, no? Sì. Stiamo facendo tutto un giro di okay, due settimane. Sì. Sì. A YouTube... Eh, ti faccio vedere. Avete il telefono? Eh, yeah. So, everybody speaks multiple languages. <laughs> la mamma allora è italiana? Sì, sì. E Umbria. Umbria, ah, io ho stato a Rimini. A Rimini? A Rimini sì. Emilia Romana. A Romana, sì. Sì, bellissimo. E il mio ragazzo prima è calabrese. Ah, calabrese. Tre anni, sei mesi ho cominciato a parlare italiano. Ah, buonissimo. Perché lui è già l'uso, ma tu non parla ne fa niente. E tu, piano piano. Ma parla, tu parla. E... Ah, bello. Mi piace tutto tanto. Italia è bella, Italia. So, so la so gente so sono... Sì, la gente... Mamma. È il cibo. Vai, vai qua senza niente 
puoi mangiare e dormire tutto fai tutto. Sì, lo so, lo so. Sì. E anche bevere un po' più. Sì. It's amazing. Ma grazie, è molto gentile. No, niente. Cosa ti dice da me? Io mi chiamo Davide. Davide, oh, Davide. Sì. Uh, io, Amel, in Italia mi chiamo Amelia. Amelia? My name is Kevin. Kevin, Kevin. un piacere. Oh, Questo è oh. io. Allora, eh, fai... Uh, one million. One million, my friend, oh, one million. Good. Good. Sì, oh. tempo, tempo. Io ho 37 anni. Eh, so, io, io sono vecchio, giovane. vecchio. No, giovane che è? Io ho eh, 53 <ride> anni, 53. Ah, no, va bene, non c'è problema. Sì, ma ci vediamo eh, dopo, ok? Eh, sì, a lui avete... Eh, anche, anche io ho Instagram, è lui che mi manda un messaggio e stiamo in contatto. Messaggi, così facciamo gem, gem. Oh, e la prossima piace. volta a Parigi mangiamo escargot. Ah, escargot, non mi piace escargot. Ah! Pizza meglio, pizza meglio. Pizza meglio. Ah, qua, qua. Grazie mille. Ciao, ci vediamo. See, that's why you need to learn languages, because imagine, if I didn't speak Italian, that would have been a done, no conversation. Right, Tassos? No, there's a lot of Greeks here, huh? especially in Belgium. We're now entering the pedestrian bridge underneath the bridge. Oh, stainless steel. Look at this. It's a bridge underneath a bridge. Oh, but from here you get epic views. Ooh, you can feel the cars. It's vibrating a little bit. I love changing into a different language. Let's see, I'm gonna ask everybody where they're from. Let me see, everybody here is from somewhere else. Oh wow, you get the views of the flag right there. Nice, you gotta be careful because this is, so this lane is for walking and I think that one is for, for bikes. Oh, sushi. Oh, bon appetit. Where are you guys from? Luxembourg. Luxembourg? Oh, are you from Luxembourg? Yeah. They told me one in ten is Luxembourgish. Well, actually, I'm not I'm originally one. from I'm from Argentina. Ah, sí, Argentina. Es que, ¿cuántos idiomas hablan ustedes? Como cinco, más o menos. Cinco? So, are you all polyglots? No, Netherlands, me. No, polyglot. What's that? It means five languages. Ah, five okay, languages. Okay, I think you said Netherlands. No, like, no, no, Netherlands, no Dutch, no Dutch. No. So, Messi, Messi. Messi. Messi in Miami ahora. Sí, porque yo soy de Miami. Ah, ok. Sí. ¿Son todos son argentinos? No, no, no. She's Swedish, Bulgarian, Luxembourgish, Scottish, Luxembourgish, Swedish. Amazing. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Miami, but father Hungarian, mother Italian, born in Venezuela. Ah. Mezcla. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> no, people ain't got anything on me. People. <laughs> For you too, for you too. Yeah, yeah. Is it like yeah. a live video? No, no, I'm filming a video about Luxembourg and uh, one of the things is that we're asking people like how many languages they speak. Because here everybody's trilingual, like yeah. officially trilingual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, when you see one. So I've been to Bulgaria. I did a long road okay. trip. Oh, I loved it. Eh, Ruse, Valikortad Novo, Burgas, eh, what else? Eh, Sofia, eh, Plovdiv. I'm from Sofia. From Sofia. Yeah. My favorite is Plovdiv and Stara Zagora. Like in terms of food mm -hmm. and the, really nice, oh, yeah. the Roman ruins. Because I'm sono Romano, eh, ah, Italiano. Eh, uh, Italiano. Uh, si, si, madre Italiana. But I'm a Roman guy, so the Roman ruins were nice. Yeah, did you go? David's been here. David. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm focusing on languages. I want to be polyglot. I'm 37, so by the time 40, I want to speak five. Like Portuguese and French will be the next now. two. Italian, Spanish, English. So French and Portuguese will be the easier two, and then we'll see from there. Huh? Cool. Right, cool. Yeah. So you guys studying or just uh, here, like on vacation, or live here? They live here and we're visiting. Got it. Got it. So this is where this is where the money is, right? Exactly. Richest country in the world. Come here, make some more money. Bye. Bye. That was awesome. That's no, great. Like, actually, you know what's crazy? That like this bridge is actually super old, but they took the time to build, you know, a new bridge, so as to upgrade. I guess super cool. And you see lots of young people. Have you noticed? Yeah. All around the street. Hey. hey. Where are you guys from? How many languages do you speak? Uh, four, and I'm learning the fifth now. Oh, <laughs> polyglot. Good, good. Which ones? German, English. Uh, Arabic and French. Que fale. <laughs> Come on. And I'm learning now like the Spanish. Wow. Ah, si, sí, español. Español. Nosotros hablamos uh, I am, I am in the A1 level. Vale. Está okay. bien. Dale, amigo. Cuídate. Ciao, ciao. We'll teach you some more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody speaks another language. Well, three languages. Every building here is like gorgeous. Look at this. We thought it was like a fortress. No, it's like a bank. Right? <laughs> the bank. This is the bank, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right? that's, that's so crazy. Look at the Trump.
As you cross this bridge, you'll be blown away by the beautiful view of the city. You got the walls, incredible architecture, very French style. And again, this is the best time to come, summer, June, July, August. It is the hottest time to come. It's roughly right now like 35, 38 Fahrenheit, really, really hot. But it's better to come here at this time of year because you have sun from eight in the morning until 10 at night. And one thing you have to know is that between 12 and two, that's lunch. After that, everything's closed to eat. You cannot eat after that until 6 p.m. So take advantage and do the sightseeing between two and six or before lunch. What's happening here? I don't know, this is the safest country in the world, so I didn't expect any crime. We should get some water because it's so hot, man. It's crazy. Porsche, Porsche, oh, Lambo. Entering the main part of the city, city center, the Place Square. And they also have a pedestrian street here. What's the name of it? I don't know yet. We're gonna find out. That's why we're here, to learn, no? All right, it's amazing. So on this strip, we have incredible luxury shops. Of course, we have Cartier. Over here, we have Gucci. But we also have a bunch of restaurants, like a mix. We have a ramen, a kiosk, bakery. We're gonna go shopping for a Roli. I'm sure the Rolex is around here too. So we're entering the city center on Avenue Monterrey, and this is the intersection of Rue Philippe II. Super posh area, Gucci, Cartier. I mean, this is where you come to spend money, but also to enjoy the summer months. As you can see, everybody here is just window shopping, enjoying, you know, coffee, having some quick snacks. And we're gonna go shopping, right, Tassos? How much money we got? Tell me. $10,000 challenge? It wouldn't be anything here in Luxembourg. <laughs> There's literally every brand here. We got Dior, Hermes, Mabulusim, I don't know what that is, Gores. I love the architecture though. Super thin building. You see the Petit Philippe's? This is my favorite watch on earth right there. Wanna see it? This is like 50,000 euros. One. Which one's this one? That one's nicest? What about this one? Yeah. So we change? Should we change? No, <laughs> no, no, thank you. How much language do you speak? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, France, oh, Turkey, France? and here. Oh, France? Uh, Teixe Kule? Yes. Yeah, Merhaba. Merhaba. This is enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is nothing so good. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, this, this, is, this is my half. This, Turkish. This is your half? Yeah. Turkish. I like the Real Madrid. Thank you. But now Benzema left. Benzema. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Mbappe will come. No, well, when? <laughs> this next year? He hasn't signed yet. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Messi's with me in Miami. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm David Hoffman. I have a YouTube channel. Wow. David's been here. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Shekule. Ah, he has that watch. So he was showing. He was showing off. I was showing off too. But this is like 20 years. Uh, and this one's my favorite though. Super expensive. Petit Philippe, the best. In Geneva though. That's in Switzerland. And we finally made it here to Grand Rue. This is the main pedestrian street that goes through the center of Luxembourg. From the beginning to the very end. It is packed, beautiful day today. Street vendors or street performers. You also have cafes, you got restaurants, you got Rolex right there. We're gonna make our way all the way to the end, to the, to the castle. This is great. I love this. All I wanna do right now is get a, a little wine. Brazil. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, just, Speak every Latin language, you're good. See, here's where it's hard to interact with people. It's a little too posh here for me. Max Mara, Longchamp, Bounce Square, Grand Optical, Vincent. Apart from free trans transport, you also have free water in Luxembourg, no? That's it. Have to get out of the sun. We're done with Grand Rue, and now we're headed over to the main square, and it's this way. So go down Rue de Fos. And at the very end, we have the square. This is the main square, Place Guilherme the second. Unfortunately, it's a little bit under construction on the very outside. Here we have a statue, and this is of William II of the Netherlands. He was King of the Netherlands, Grand Duke of Luxembourg, and Duke of Limburg. It's a beautiful square, but it's extremely hot right now. It's 4 p.m. Let's walk around, let's find a beer. I need to sit down. I'm melting. Luckily, we have sunlight till 10, so we have time. And this is the Grand Duke Palace. Since 1890, the Grand Duke lived here. Now he doesn't live here anymore. Uh, I think his great-great-grandfather used to live here. And every single day during the summer months from 8 to like 4 p.m., they have the changing of the guards. So you can see this. You can just chill right here at this chocolate house and watch, eat some chocolate cake, uh, drink some chocolate 
uh, hot chocolate or go somewhere else and get a beer. It was a really cool experience. I loved it. I love the Grand Duke Palace, amazing. And actually the, the site dates back to like 1418 when it started as a town hall. The original town hall was right here. What a monster building. It's like a huge mansion. You know what? 4.30, let's get a beer. Urban. So, ¿cuál es, cuál es la birra que recomienda? Que stout. Me piace Me... la nera, la ristout. Si no, lipa es muy buena o la con la no filtrada. ¿Y estos son de Luxemburgo? Pues, son todos luxemburguesi. Oh, estos tres aquí son los que hacen los padrones del, del barco. Ah. Aquí en Luxemburgo, porque la hacen ellos. Ah, perfecto. So, para mí, Twisted Cat IPA. Grande o piccola. Grande. E per noi è un po' di acqua, è acqua regolare? Sì, regolare. Sì. Regolare e per me è frizzante, se c'è. Quindi mezzo naturale e mezzo gasata? No, uno, uno naturale. Uno naturale con i bicchieri? Sì, e per cibo dov'è? Perché io solo ho un po' di fame e prendo qualcosa. Per andare qua intanto vi porto il vero. Va bene, grazie. All right, guys, so amazing. This is called Urban Bar. The owner, he has twisted, I guess that's the name of the brewery, twisted. Twisted Cat, Unfiltered Pale Ale, Twisted Cat IPA, Twisted Cat Irish Stout. I'm going with the Cat IPA. I'm going big. Yeah, I need to eat something. I can't wait any longer. I'm gonna get some zucchini fries. Yeah, basta. Ah, si, per me. Ah, sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Where are you from? Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. Fala Portuguese. Nice. Agora. <laughs> so quick. Thank you so much. Muito obrigado. Everybody speaks a different language. Oh, it's gonna be good. That's actually amazing. It's like a dark IPA. I've never seen an IPA this color. Usually it's like cloudy and yellow. I couldn't post up here without eating something. I got some zucchini fritters. I love zucchini. Some nice mayo. Ooh, it's still hot. Delicious snack. So what do you think of the city? Oh, I mean, it's beautiful, huh? I mean, this area compared to the, I say, the close to the bridge and before we entered, you know, because we stay obviously a bit outside the city, I think it's a bit more posh, but it's fine, you know, it is what it is. I mean, this is the richest country in the world. Yeah. Highest GDP, and of course, people come here and put their money in the banks. There's lots of banks, that I noticed. Mm -hmm. And it's a crossroads, right? France, Germany. Belgium, Netherlands North, so everybody come here. It's a great holiday destination. Very easy from any of these countries. You can get here from Paris, straight with uh, from train station with a high-speed train. You also you can... hear many languages being spoken in the streets walking around. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So Every even if you don't speak maybe Luxembourgish or German, I think obviously everybody is comfortable with English, I think. I but uh, even if we speak out, we speak Spanish, can connect with people I feel because it's, it's very multicultural. I feel like a lot of French though. Yeah. Right? French yep. is the, the dominant language. Yeah. Gotta learn French. Teach me. Je ne parle pas le français. Je ne parle pas le français. I don't speak French. Hey, ciao. Ciao. Take care. Next time I see you, I speak French. Enchanté. Enchanté. See you. Ça va? How are you? Ça va? Ça va. The, yeah, and you want to say avec plaisir? Avec plaisir. It's a pleasure. Avec plaisir. Uh -huh. So, uh, in, it, in Portuguese, uma prazer. Huh? Uma prazer. Yeah, um prazer. Um prazer. Muito obrigado. So, I love the beer, love the people here. Lots of Portuguese. Lots here, of Portuguese. By the way, huh? I think that's a 14% of the speaking population. 14%. 14. Yeah, even that in our hotel, the guys. Everybody's speaking. Uh, fluent Portuguese. Even the way you're here, mm -hmm. Portuguese. Yeah. So, if you know Italian, you know French, you know Spanish, English, German, you get you get it by here. Yeah, you do. That's great. Yeah. I love this country already. Yeah. Moving here. Let's go. I speak five. Five. You're polyglot. That's what it means. Like five languages. Which oh, one? I didn't know that. I speak Luxembourgish because I was born here. Portuguese, English, French, and German. It was nice to meet you guys. That's crazy, you're a very boy speaks like min minimum three. <laughs> if you speak three, like sometimes you know people say, Oh, you speak three languages. I'm like, three is like the bare minimum, you know? And then you build from there, right? My dad's from Hungary and everybody there speaks five. 
five. Everybody's applauding a lot. This is amazing. She's Venezuelan. ¿Cuántos yeah. idiomas hablas? Hablo tres idiomas. Spanish, French, and English. I understand like four, so can... Which ones? I understand Portuguese, Italian, Romanian, and... That's so good. And in Spanish, of course. Yeah, yeah. French. Yeah. So basically, if you want to become a polyglot, come to this country, live here for two years. Yeah. French, Portuguese. Yeah, you understand everything. Yeah. It's like, it's amazing. Yeah. Wow, bueno, gracias, mía, gracias. Gracias. So, una pregunta. Cachapa o arepa? Cachapa. Yes! 100% cachapa. Mi patria, la patria. Vale, no que vamos. Que Gracias, hasta luego. Luxembourg is gorgeous. Now we're walking to the end of the old town and walking to some place called Bok Case Mates. This is a vast complex of underground tunnels and galleries that began in 1644. Then they're closing soon, so we might not make it in time. But if we don't, we'll just get the elevator and go up to the Grund, one of the oldest uh, areas in Luxembourg, oldest neighborhoods from the 14th century. And from there, we'll get epic views over this side of town. And then after that, we're going to dinner. Wow, look at this view, incredible, so beautiful. So this is the fortress. Oh, that's the new bridge, new red bridge. This view is amazing. Behind me, we have the Grund, the oldest part of Luxembourg. And right here, as you can see, it says Luxembourg 963. This is where Count Sigrid built Bach Promontory, so the beginning of the fortress. Later in the 18th century, the Austrians made Bach Castmates, which was an underground tunnel, and they also used that in World War II as a shelter. There's a concert going on over here, right in the center of the Grund. And look at the river. Woo! Beautiful. It's really nice. These views. Oh wow, no, it's uh, it's insane. I didn't expect to be so beautiful, to be honest. I mean, I hadn't done any research, so I came in with no expectations, you know? Yeah, I just saw photos, I mean, but that's really everything online. Nothing like on YouTube that shows you what the city looks like. Yeah, no, what I love the most is how multicultural it is. You know, yeah. it has lots of expats, lots of languages. Has everything. You can feel it, yeah. Ready? Hello, now we are leaving the city and we are driving towards Gravenmacher which is one of the oldest um, places in Luxembourg, in, in Europe really. And we're going to sit on the border where the Moselle River is. So we are going to sit and have dinner in Luxembourg, but we're just going to look over the river where it's actually Germany. So it's really cool that you can be in one country um, and just look over at the other one. So Luxembourg being like so tiny, is surrounded by Germany, France and Belgium. So there's a couple of places where you can be on one side of the country and look over into the other country. So I think you'll enjoy that. When we drove in, we saw there was like a restaurant literally on the border. Like, same thing. Yeah, yeah. And Incredible. there was no sign. Yeah. yeah. That's the only thing I was like upset. I was like, how is there not a sign that says like, you're entering Luxembourg? Nothing. That's great. So we're going to drink uh, some German beers. Why not? Why not? Pleasure. Hi, nice to meet you. My man, Mateus, join me over here. Let me let me see with you. What do you think? We want to try some wine. We're next yes. to vineyards. Let's start with Kimmel. Kimmel? Yeah. Typical Luxembourgish for every occasion. She can already, she's an experienced drinker, works for, <laughs> for any occasion that we have in Luxembourg. If it's going to neighbor, forget X, Kimmel is always involved. Would you like something dry, something oaky, something a bit sweeter, fruitier? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, I like oaky. Me too. Okay, so then we go for um, Alice Hartmann. It's the most, probably one of the most famous, or for sure the most prestigious one in Luxembourg. And it was the first one that put the Cremant in oak, or the wine in oak, and made Cremant out of it. Very, very nice. And this is white wine? It's Cremant. 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 Sparkling wine. Sparkling wine, yeah. So oh, she just told me that yeah, earlier. Local. And then, so your menu, you have... Mm -hmm. A lot of different things. You have burgers, kid menu, but this is where we're focusing. That's what we're focusing on. Yeah. That's what we uh, what we're known for: Luxembourgish food. Um, of course, all are good, all are classics. Otherwise, they would not be in the category. Um, friture is one of the um, the most typical dishes from this area. Uh, also from the restaurant. I would not recommend now if you don't know the dish to have one by yourself, but it's very nice probably to share just one as a starter. You can uh, you have every one one or two fish. Fish that's just fried, pepper, salt, done. Cordon Bleu, one of the most sold dishes here. So very, very nice, very comforting food. Shall we probably suggest to make a little mix of everything? Perfect. Mm. Let's do it. Yeah. Yes. Yep, let's do it. Let's start. Let's start. Yeah. This is Luxembourgish sparkling wine. That is. Your first. I heard it's better than champagne. Much better. Much better. Ooh. Is it your first? First no, time. First time trying this. My first. Wow. 
Let's go. So, we got the producer down in the village. So you can not drink much local, much more local than this. Voila. Later. After work. <laughs> Before and after work. Good. Love the bubbles. Oh, that's nice. Mm, very nice. Second for you. Wow. The sparkling wine is rival, like yes. one of the top in the world. Because I personally don't love um, Prosecco. Okay. I, th I think Prosecco has too much sugar. Agreed. So this is like fruit and dry? Uh, well, yeah, is this see. is not the driest that we produce, but it's well balanced. And it's like, so it's a... Yeah, it's a good balance. Good balance, then with the oak, so it's some, I think, very creamy, very aromatic. Prost. 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 It's really, really nice, easy to drink. It's really amazing. It's really good. Really good right? It's really good. There's a hint of spice. This is it. Yes. Beautiful. These wines with the view yeah. of Germany. Wow. Like That's fantastic. <sighs> like I just like this is all I want to do the rest of my life. Buy, buy a house out here, do nothing, chill, eat. <laughs> Why not? Oh, wow. This is the meat salad. This looks awesome. This is the fish with yeah. a million bones. Are you yep. going to complain about the bones? <laughs> no, you know, I, can I just eat this like like in Italy, just head and all? Or no? No, you have to break it apart and take it, everything out. That's uh, how you want. You that's how you want. Like you want. I want to film you. <laughs> you want to film me eating? Let's do this. You want to see me do it? Yeah. And this is the called Fritur de Poison. So, like, poison? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look at that fish. So this is a uh, river fish. Of course. Ooh, it's still super hot. Is it? Ooh. Crispy. Fresh so, out the fryer. I think you do, you rip the head off. And you go in and see the main thing is that bone. So we don't want to eat the spine. That, oh. oh wow, look at you. Yeah, just like that. <sighs> it's hard, but the best thing to do is like that. All those little bones, or you, you wouldn't eat the bones. Mm. That crunch. Oh wow, the crunch. That mayo though, it's so good. Yeah, so you just gotta open it that, see? This is the main thing, get that, that. Cause you can't eat that. Okay. That's like the problem, this is good. And I'm eating with my hands because I enjoy doing it like that, right? That's the next stage. It's awesome. Oh, it's hot. Mm, it's hot. Okay. Wow, some good fish. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Do you open it from underneath or the top? Underneath. Yeah. And maybe you just go from the top. Oh. It's easier because you have the spine right there. If not, you break it. Oh yeah, it's hot. We should have done that first, right? The meat salad. Yeah. It's so crunchy. Mmm. Mmm. Good like that, right? I'm really good. Wow. No, it's not so bad. Extremely crunchy. Really, really hot. The mayo, the pairing, cold. You're right. And creamy. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of meat salad, but it does look like meatloaf, and I like that it comes with the actual salad tomatoes and we have some mustard so for this i'm just gonna get a piece oh and it comes with a little bit of um super crunchy bread so you can have it like almost like bruschetta it's funny how i always forget how to say that even though i'm italian you know what i really like when you compare like foods yeah like, as in like food from here compared to like an italian food like you make those like um connections well i feel like it's the only way for me to understand like you know the similarities it makes sense How's that? Amazing. Super mm -hmm. creamy. Get some salad though, like that. And this is all I think fresh. that's the first green thing you've eaten all day there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True. We're doing a lot of beer, a lot of meat. Mm. This is a meat eating country. You're doing a great job. I'm learning, you taught me well. Yeah. I'm checking mine and I'm checking yours. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean like, the main that thing is- that is pretty clean. Yeah, you just gotta get rid of the spine. You learned that in Asia. I know that you learned that in I, Asia. I learned that in Asia, For of sure course, of course. you learned that in Asia. I learned that in India, going, mm -hmm. going through lots of fish when I was like, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. This is delicious. I will have more, we have two, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. There's like onions, some herbs in here. I'm guessing like it's like, 
case it was like mayo. It's like mayo, this country and Belgium, mm. all about their mayo. I love this restaurant. It's so good. Top restaurant. Good, right? Mm. Good. Really good. Good. Almost like pate. It is. Like a, like a coarse you like the mustard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. The mustard in Belgium and in Luxembourg, mm. like France, delicious. It's not like America. It's like falling apart. It's Sorry, not guys. the same without mustard. No, and I like the salad. It has also a nice creamy dressing on top. I think you're just like really missing vegetables right now. <laughs> Luxembourgish food. A plus in my book. I'm blown away. I didn't even know this food mm. existed. Like the style of the food obviously has that Germanic influence, but it also has touches from France and the, the wine. Hey, better than champagne? You guys tell me below. <laughs> this is why I want to come to Europe, to enjoy life. <laughs> so he brought us a Pinot Noir. Of course, everything is Luxembourgish. So we have ribeye. What are these called? Knidlen. Knidlen. Yeah, so it's kind of like flowery dumpling sort of thing. Um, and then here you've got the cordon bleu. Cordon bleu. Which is like the ham and the veal. Um, so and bacon wrapped together. It's the best. Um, and then this, remember, he said is like the, the dish that people would have, you know, at family occasions, even at funerals. Um, meat, salad, and chips. Fries, yeah. they would say. Cold cuts. Yes, exactly. Well, I'm yeah. excited. Who wants a glass? Tassels? So before we eat, we would say good and appetit, by the way. Good and appetit. Good and appetit, yeah. Good and appetit. Yeah, it's like some yeah. So what do you think? How are we starting? Um, I would say, well, you're going to start light. Go straight for the good I'm stuff. Gonna, I'm big. You don't eat the fat. You oh, like I only. Yeah, that's it's the, the best. Way, yeah. And it also has this beautiful sauce. It looks like peppercorn, doesn't it? Peppercorn. It is peppercorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the pepper. Good. Love that spice. Yeah, nice salt. When you have food that doesn't taste good at all, do you still pretend it is good or you actually do? No, I say not for me. Do you actually? Yeah, not for me. That's gross. Mm. Yeah. If it's gross, yeah, yeah. it's good, right? Yeah, mm. of course. Even cold, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. The peppercorn sauce makes all the difference. This wine comes from a village two villages away. So right here. So all the wine is made, um, all the vineyards are on this slope going down to this river. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of the river? Mazel. Mazel. And I love the restaurant. Beautiful setting, nice terrace, lots of people. You hear 15 languages at one time. It's my favorite part. Like literally, I don't know what they're speaking. Maybe it's German. Luxembourg. That's Luxembourg. It's so wild. Inside is ham, veal. Sometimes it's bacon, but this is ham, veal, and then just fried on the outside. So it's like wrapped. Yes. And you have this insane. That's like a sauce. creamy yeah, veal reduction. Creamy. Yes. And it, it's champignon, so it's, uh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. It's Europe, man. Nothing like Europe. Nothing. Personally, love mushroom sauces. Mm, me too. Yeah, me too. Me that too. brown gravy, it's so rich. It's a close call between peppercorn and mushroom sauces. Mm -hmm. Those two. Oh, those two are like hand in hand. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Remember, you have to be. I don't think you can be a vegan in this country, right? <laughs> You'd struggle, I think, a little bit. Wow. Wow, wow. And you have to get the fritz. Fritz with the sauce. That's the best way. Everything's good. Mm. This restaurant's the best. Let's do that. Let's do it. You said it's more similar to the Polish. Yeah, yeah. it's like flowery. They have so many ways of serving this. So sometimes they serve it with cream and bacon, sometimes they serve it with just butter. This one is a little bit pan fried. Uh, nah, apple strudel, but like it. Yeah, this is like a. Um, like apple jam. Like a homemade apple compote. Compote? Yes, apple compote. <laughs> wow, I'm so happy. I feel like the apple sauce always lightens up the heaviness of the, the flour, right? So sweet. Yeah, that combination good. is like really good. Yeah. It's a very dense potato dumpling. Oh my god. It's good. You know, there's a national dish of like 20 countries. Is it? Yeah, Russia, uh, in Poland too. A lot of countries. Okay. National dish is. Uh, How would you compare that to gnocchi? 
Well, the problem is gnocchi is going to be very creamy. Yes. We're going to put cream all over. Yeah. So and smaller. Yes. This one's denser, uh, just more savory. True. The best is the ribeye. So this is where Germany and France, or Germanic tribes and Frankish tribes. Live. Yes, they didn't have it in writing for a long time. Many people could speak it, but couldn't necessarily read and write it because it was just something that was spoken was spoken between families, and that's how you would learn it. Um, it's actually quite new that people put it down in writing. So I know a lot of Luxembourgish people that struggle to text with it. Oh wow! Because they're like, hold on, how do I write this? Because they know how to say it, but they don't know how to write it. If it's not written, it just comes from speaking. Yes, yeah. exactly. Did you know in Italy, in Sicily? People from this side of the city and the people on this side don't understand each other. No way. Yeah. I mean, obviously, writing wise, it's the right. same. We're all trilingual. It's amazing. Oh, that's good. It's, it's really like good. when three trilinguals eat together. Mm. Love some bread. So, what dessert do you think we should try? Dame Blanche. The Dame most Blanche. classical vanilla ice cream, good Belgian chocolate. We don't have chocolate in Luxembourg. And uh, Chantilly. And Chantilly? Chantilly. Whipped cream. Oh, Shanti just sounds better. Should we go with that? Yeah, think? let's do it. So you can just do a little bit here on the side, on top. It might not quite so. Always add a little bit. Whenever you feel like adding a bit more of hot chocolate, just to, but like this, you'll at least have a good begin. The Dame Blanche. The Dame Blanche. Yeah. Why not, right? Okay. We only die once. Yeah, because you live every day. You do live every day. Oh, that is good. <laughs> So fluffy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. It's really good. Mm. Wow. This restaurant's amazing. Only about a 20 minute drive from Luxembourg City. That is Kupchen, Luxembourgish food and wine. See you soon. Bye. And our time in Luxembourg is done. We're going to the city center to get some drone shots and then we're going to brunch. So we're almost done. How are we going to fit all this? Bene, let's go. So we're leaving our hotel, Hotel de Brau, Brasserie Nationale. Thank you so much to Luxembourg Life. Where is this? Did it work? Done. Let's go to Luxembourg. So this is our last morning in Luxembourg. We're just gonna go to a place called Come à la Maison Italian Beauty Food. It's one of the best places on a Sunday to have brunch. It is massive place. The owners look super, super interesting. Uh, they're Italians. We're gonna speak Italian the whole time, basically. Uh, massive amount of food, though. And on a Sunday in Luxembourg, if you don't do brunch, there's nothing really else to do. There's two places for brunch. This is the one Marina from the Luxembourg Life recommended I go to. So we called them, said come. So we're gonna do some, you know, some special food. And yeah, look at this. This is countryside. So the hotel is 20 minutes outside the city, but uh, I really like it here. Just really, really peaceful. Nothing out here, just farmland. And after a 20 minute drive, we're here. Come à la maison. Let's go. Hello. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Come va? Bene. Davide. Davide. Si, piacere. Si, 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 madre italiana. Ah, mamma mia, non penso. Si, si, mi piace il tuo occhiale. Ah, grazie. Bello, bello. <laughs> si, this is dope. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, Vario is the owner of this beautiful restaurant. It is the biggest brunch in Luxembourg. It is Italian. We're going to have pasta bread, they also have sushi, they have seafood. I'm excited, this is amazing. Lots of different rooms here. This is the place to come on a Sunday in Luxembourg. The pizzeria right here. Look at this guys, this is like a real Italian aroma. Come on, stai? Pistacchio. Pistacchio. Pistacchio di Bronte e Mortadella. Wow, this is some real good stuff. So this, right here we have the ultimate bread. It's a uh, focaccia. Everybody here is Italian. Wow, the amount of smells, so good. Everything comes from Italy. The wine, they have an anoteca, they have a cocktail bar, they have a sushi bar at the back, they have more and more and more. And I'm gonna try some food. Wow, e questo è tuo favorito? Si, look at this. Mmm. Oh, questo è mortadella? Mortadella. Mm. 
ricotta di bufala, the cheese. e crema di pistacchio di crocco. So pistacchio, cheese, bread and mortadella, the ultimate. Oh, questo è like so fluffy. The cheese. Wow, this is what you eat in Italy. <laughs> Amico, questo è massimo. It's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> and by the way, brunch is 59 euros, unlimited. That doesn't include drinks. You want a drink? That's on you. <laughs> See, no? Mm. It's totally because that buffalo cheese, it's like the best mozzarella on earth. It's so creamy. All right, let's go. We've been here walking around for about an hour. It is so big. It's like forever. Over here, they have the beer bar. So world beer bar. They have the pizza station or the bread station. Back here, they have a whole section of cheese. You see the cheese? The cheese. All the product come directly from Italy. Everything? Yes, everything we, we make homemade. And uh, all the product, two times, we have two trucks by week coming to Drake in Italy. So two trucks per week bring the products yes. from Italy. And over here we have the Mo cheese bar. Mozzarella, bufala, mozzarella, fior di latte. No, quelle migliore. So, with, the, with the truffle. With truffles. Si, perché mia famiglia è di Umbria. Ah, allora si. Yes. Si, di Umbria. Uh, my land is with, truffle land. Yes. We go with the dogs, andiamo con cane, a prendere truffa. Oh, I feel like we have to try some of this. But this is so good. So they have Parmesan cheese, they have buffala, they have so many different ones. I see, see. I'll try it. Meto de Puglia? Si. Puglia. So Puglia is the heel of Italy. It's one of the best places on earth if you're looking for food and beaches. Oh. 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 It melts. Fresco. Troppo fresco. And these are smoked. Questo farmaggio smoked. I mean, we're gonna eat like crazy here. Ma si, un po', no? Con la truffa. Questa è truffa nera, no? Oui, la truffa nera. Yeah, so this is black truffle. Oh, and he's gonna throw some amazing olive oil. Si, sufficiente, grazie. The Calabria. Calabria is another southern uh, Italian region. Beautiful. Southern Italy is a whole different world. She's just giving me a mountain of cheese. Okay. Si, sí, uno. Prendiamo uno de questo. Eh, wow, con arugula. Picante. Questo picante. <laughs> it's okay. We're, they speak. Everybody's trilingual. Si, sí, no? Ma tu parla che era francese? No, italiano. Normalmente, ma adesso parla francese. No, va bene, va bene. Al servizio di solito è francese. Si, si. So, the, the Parmesan cheese. You know, this is the, if, if you want to help your bones stay like durable your whole life, you get a little bit of Parmesan every day, pure calcium. And this right here, this cheese, she does it a la mano, no? Con walnuts, this one has pistachio. Bello. Ah, I'm moving here, straight up. I'm gonna walk around with cheese all day. This is Anduja. Anduja. Calabria, typique. So it's typical it's, the Calabria, so yes. it's a, tr a traditional Calabrian cheese and it has salchicha, <laughs> so it has like a, like a chorizo. It's a hot. Yeah, spicy, a spicy, spicy. sausage. Grazie. Grazie. La focaccia si, l'ho provato, era un'altra cosa. It's like a different world, delicious. All right, let's go over here. We have all the cold cuts. Here we have mortadella, eh, prosciutto, prosciutto with truffle. This one looks so good. Sì, prendiamo uno di queste. E che, che pensi? Perché è, è tante cose qua. That's the problem. There's so much food. And you, you, how much stomach can you have? You know, like, you have from 11 to 4 to eat. You know what? I'll try the smoked cheese. Oh. Oh. Questo sicuramente. I love the music, too. So she's going to give me an assortment of cold cuts. This is very traditional in Italy. But melone con prosciutto. Questo è... Qual è queste? Speck. 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 Speck del Tirolo. Speck del Tirolo. So over here they have the focaccia. This yeah. is some very fluffy bread. It looks like there's tomato on top. And this bread, it's also made of bread. It's a... Uh, Artisanal bread. Yes. Cominciamo yeah. con questo. This is just yeah. the appetizer. Yes, just for the start. Just for the start. Yes. 
the traditional ranch. Normally you drink also with the Francia Corta. Francia Corta, so yes. we're going to try with La Francia Corta. Francia Corta, you start with this. And so we're walking past the Anoteca, that's like the wine room over here. Beautiful hallway over there full of products. And over here we have the sushi bar. Yes. It's, the problem is no più mani. <laughs> like I have no more hands for this. This is amazing. So this is the sushi bar. There's gyozas. There's sushi. So nigiri, eh, que piu, che, sushi rolls. Eh, my friend over there is yes, from Brazil. Katsuki, yes. See, Brazil. So where do we go? There's too much. You have to eat this and come back. Over there they have a salad bar. Here they have some fried stuff. La crepe. Look at the crepe. And my friend over here is from Gubbio. Gubina. La Gubina. La Gubina. She's making Nutella crepes. This is how we do it in Italy. Always with la Nutella. Let's go guys, let's go. I mean it's so much. Pastry bar. Tiramisu. We have forever things. Wow. Let's go here, let's go here. I'm gonna get a grappa. It's one of my favorite things ever. It's the still grapes. But let me try this before we go over there because I'm really excited for this one. Prosciutto with black truffle. Wow. It's orgasmic, guys. Oh my God. The black truffle, so fresh. My mouth is salivating, I need to get another one. Better than Italy. Well, it's Italy in Luxembourg. Every room is different. Wine everywhere. E quale questo? This distillery is from 1890 in the Barolo. Where is Piemonte. Piemonte. So this is the north, one of the northern regions that is closer to Switzerland. No? Vado. Sì, sì. And this is how you say cheers in Italian. Brindiamo. Insieme. Sì, Davide. Piacere di dire qua. Piacere. Anche io. Con noi. Grazie, grazie. In Luxemburgo, grazie. Woo! That's strong. Yeah, it's nice, no? It's beautiful. It's not too bad. Like, I think this is an easy one to take easy, down. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes the grappa is so strong, almost like raki or rakia, that where it's like, you know, it heats you up. This is perfect. Molto fina. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's the one she does by hand. So crazy. It looks amazing with walnuts. Dio mio. Dio caro. Oh, that's gonna be the best one, bro. La burrata con, tr con trufa. So I went to the kitchen and let them know we're coming in to see them make incredible pastas. But before we go in, I'm gonna try this fluffy focaccia. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna put the most amazing burrata of all time. If you guys don't know what burrata is, it's one of the fluffiest, creamiest cheeses ever with truffle. Oh, it's like straight from the cow. The best burrata I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Whoa. I'm blown away. It's so good. This is not mozzarella, this is burrata. La focaccia <laughs> with tomato. And this was an old garage. Right here, we have yes. where the cars were parked. Yes. Literally, they left it there. Yes. Amazing. Before, it's uh, my shop for the furniture shops because I'm a designer. Oh, you're a designer? Yes. It's my first, Italian. My first job for 30 years. And uh, it's, uh, I try for two cooking just for to joke with my friend for eating my uh, the, the kitchen for my mother's kitchen yes and uh, just I for cook. fun yes for the fun for fun he was <laughs> cooking and then it, out of nowhere start. this yeah. started yeah. so it started very small and then it kept expanding yes. expanding expanding yeah. now he has the best brunch in luxembourg on a sunday you yes. come here at 11 a.m and you're gonna be blown away Three thousand square meter. andiamo andiamo thank you let's go inside pasta time wow so many people so you come here, you can ask for whatever pasta you want, ravioli. Devi fare le geste un po' più lento. Sì, solo per la camera, perché se no... Crazy. Il ritorno. That's 
grazie. Un po' di formaggio? Sì, yeah, no, 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 un po' di più. Guarda, beautiful parmesan. Un po' più. We're doing a street food style. We taste together. Mm. That's a real pasta. Oh, a bonus. I think this is the national dish of Italy. Yes. It's amazing. Super thick penne pasta. I personally love creamy pastas, but this, the ingredients, the meat, the tomato sauce, plus parmesan. Man, I'm blown away by the food. Thank you. I've never seen a ravioli that big. Who's gonna make this one first? These are some monster raviolis. Wow. Look at these massive ravioli. You have the Parmesan cheese, tomato on top. I'm gonna cut it in half so you can see the ricotta and the spinach. Grande. I've never felt more at home in my life than here. This is epic, so fresh. There's nothing like Italian pastas from the source. Everything here comes from Italy. We make so the ravioli here. Ravioli here? Uh, this morning, we cooked the ravioli. Uh, tomate, tomatino. So Francesco is the one who is the head of all the pasta. E anche le carne? Questa zona? Le carne c'è altre persone. Sì, e tu dove sei? La pasta, diciamo. Ma di dove sei in Italia? Salerno. Salerno? Ah, oh, okay, so everybody here is from a different city. It's really amazing. It's like you're, you're just traveling all to Italy here, every region. Salerno, Napoli, Palermo, Lecce, Mose. I mean, it's like epic. Oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Italian sausage, it, Italian forchetta. And this, guys, this is la porchetta. This, when you go to Florence, you get the porchetta sandwich. It's pork, but they also add some herbs. You get the fat. Lo prendo così? Just like this. Look at that fat layer. Nothing like it. The herbs. So much flavor. So savory. Mmm, salty. Look at that. Wow, it's dripping with oils. Oh, so that's, that's pepper from Calabria. If you guys are in Calabria, Calabria. If the boot, this is Puglia and this is Calabria on the way into Sicilia. Just before to Sicilia. Yeah, amazing. Un giorno io vorrei fare un giro con macchina e cruciare a, a Sicilia. Si, andiamo One insieme. Day. I'll go with you for you sure. Go. We go together. We go in the Austin Martin. Uh, opa. <laughs> Il movimento piano, Michele. This is a champ it's Italian champagne, but it's not Prosecco. This is like another level. Grazie. It is a Francia Corta. Francia Corta? It is a Francia Corta, Michele. Hey. Vieni con noi, parla Cine, del Francia Corta. È una bollicina della regione del Lombardia. È giusto una zona circoscritta che sta per Francia Corta. Andiamo. Grazie per tutto. Sì. Mm. It's good. Buono, buono. Devi mangiare questo. Questo? È la crosta della porchetta. He wants me to eat the skin of the yes. pork. It's oily, it's fatty, it's crunchy. Crazy, huh? Eh? It's hard to explain these flavors. The oil, the fat. Mm. But you need this to cleanse your palate. My big chef. There's a big chef right yes. here. Arturo. Do say? Arturo. Portugal. Ah, Portugal? Si. Ah, Portugues. Eh, si. He's not Italian, he's Portugues. De, de dove? Lisboa? No, uh, Porto. Porto, o Porto. Si, o Porto's good. Eh, la Francesina. Yeah. La Francesina. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an amazing uh, sandwich. Ah, si? Oh, bono, bono. So we're gonna try some sausage. The, the porchetta, he make, uh, Arturo, he make the porchetta. Oh yeah? So he yeah. makes the porchetta. Speciality for the... Ricetta di Arturo. Incredible. Yeah. Molto buono e mo, molto buon. Molto, molto, molto buono. Bon. <laughs> sì. Ancora comincio di parlare tutte le lingue. Sì, sì. 
Pequeno. Spicy sausage with some peppers from Calabria. <laughs> Every bite <coughs> is orgasmic. Yeah. See, no? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Oh, and here we are entering the kitchen. Oh my gosh. Kefai Lee. Oh. Esugo. Esugo per Leoma. So he's basically making like a lobster broth. Eh, como un broth. Como. Si. Eke cuello. Ooh, he's gonna light on fire. Oh. It's crazy. So here he's making like a tomato base broth with lobsters and uh, eh, como un langost langostino questo. I've never seen this. So what do you have in there? You have celery, tomato. It's sugo, so the sauce is for the pasta. All right, let's go, let's go. Dove andiamo? Sushi or, or pesce? Pesce, let's go, let's go for seafood. See, the problem with the pasta is you get too full. You need to have just a tiny bit of pasta and then have the seafood. Uh, it doesn't end here with the champagne. Eh, como, eh, no se llama eh, pro, eh, Prosecco. No, so, Francia Corta. Francia, no, ma, ma, mai lo ho visto. Eh. Francia Corta. Eh sì. Oh, será è uguale lo champagne. Lo stesso metodo e lo stesso... Per i francesi no, ma... Yeah, yeah. Champagne si può chiamare solo in Francia. Noi siamo in rivalità. Eh, con exactly. So they're saying it's almost yeah. the same as champagne, the only thing is they can't call it champagne because it's not from the champagne region. Not but for, the, for the French people. Eh? No, 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 obviously. Sorry for the French people, but uh, it's Italian and... Uh, is it better? Okay, let's go for seafood. He's slowly getting me drunk here. And I'm enjoying it. So over here we have shrimp with olives. Over there we have fried shrimp. And at the very end we have cauliflower and broccoli. And this is calamari, fried calamari. Oh, still so hot. Mamma mia. Cruyente. Mm. Crunchy. The raw bar. Here we have oysters. We have nails. Snails from the sea. You got salmon. So smoked salmon, octopus. You got shrimp, calamari, and mussels. And over there, look at the never-ending amount of oysters. Oysters, oysters, oysters. Per me, ostra, sempre. Dieci, venti, cinquanta. You got lobster, you have shrimp, all fresh. This one is how you do it, you slurp. I, I don't know France. I have to go to France one day. To all my French people here, please let me know where should I go in the future. Bordeaux. I want to go to Bordeaux for the wine. Mm. Okay, so next we're going to get some crabs. Crab claws. Quale? Is it lobster claws? It's a lobster. Yeah, you put a bunch of lemon on it. So the way we do this, just get ready, get, get dirty. Woo Look at that meat. <gasps> Wow! This will be succulent. Mm. So fresh. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever had this. De veramente, no, 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 mangiato con una cosa così. Mai. Freschi, freschi, eh? non congelati. Eh? Yeah, never frozen. Io sono lo sumbuguese. Ah, sì, lo sumbuguese? Sì, perché quando io parlo con una persona è sempre di un'altra parte, no? Mia madre è italiana e mio padre è francese. No. E, e quante lingue parla? Quattro. Quattro? Sono un boghese, tedesco, italiano e francese. Ok, next up sushi. I'm like trying to get through this. Oh, a lot of food, but everything's so good. And I love it because when you enter this part of the restaurant, it is literally like being in an Italian restaurant on the sea or a Greek restaurant, right? Wow, I'm blown away. Over here, some fried stuff. So, eh, questo è come un falafel. It looks like falafel. I don't know if it really is. Over there we have vegetables, and over here we have the sushi bar right there. Ma Luigi, che fai? Eccoci qua, portato un po' di vino buono direttamente dall'Italia. He's a sommelier. He just came here on the Vespa with some wine. This is how they do in Italy. Amazing. Andiamo subito ad assaggiare. E qual è queste? Queste vino? Vino del del sud. 
della Campania, un greco di tufo del nostro amico Leonardo De Risio. Andiamo subito a assaggiare questo fantastico vino. Napoli che sono campione del mondo, sì, campione, campione dell'Italia quest'anno. So the reason why they say the white wines in the south are really good because of the sun, the heat, no? Perché è troppo caldo lì. Greco di tufo, so Greek of tufo. Prendiamo. Salute. Grazie, grazie. Salute. Grazie, grazie per tutto. Oh my gosh. You know it's dry, but it still has a little bit of fruit. Mm. Bullet fruit, no? Mm. Oh, love it. Ice cold, ice cold. We take the Somalia with us. Wait. VIP. <laughs> Cheers. Andiamo, andiamo. So here we have the sushi bar. So good, so fresh. Gyoza, uh, this is fried shrimp. And then over here, we have the nigiri. We have some uh, rolls. You make it every day, fresh. Oh wow, so if you want, you can get sake, but we're sticking to the Italian style. Okay, this is our sushi plate. Come cominciamo con questo? Everything. Come dobbiamo cominciare. All right, so I love this. The wasabi. Wasabi, yeah. Ginger and soy sauce. I make this, a maison. Okay, make this, shrimp. It's copy. Salmon flambe, salmon fresh, tuna fresh. Uh, maki salmon, uh, maki tuna, cui. Mac California scampi and salmon California. We have wasabi, nice spice, but my friend hasn't seen my hot sauce. Questo mio, mi picante. <laughs> tu lo previ. We'll put it right here a little bit. Vai, io prendo queste. I want the salmon flambe, so they nuke this. E con la salsa mia, sicuramente. I'll try it with my sauce. Mmm, so fresh. Molto buono. Molto buono. Get some of that soy right there. Mm. I love the sushi bar. Get some tuna. I love the soy sauce. Soy sauce is key ingredient when you're eating sushi. I really love this place. I love this place. Oh, homemade sushi. Says my man. Oh, so he won the World Sushi Championship 2017? He's an award-winning sushi chef. I love it. In Tokyo. Ah. Arigato. I it. Ah. That's so good. The one thing that gets me, sushi, every day. I just keep eating it all. Mmm. So fresh. Good, right? A little bit. A little hot, yeah? A little hot. And then we have sake. Very good. <laughs> that bottle's yours. It's for you. I'm gonna finish it. I feel bad my man here, but you know he's the owner. He can eat all day if he wants. Mm. Tempura e gyoza. Senti. Gyoza. Gyoza. It's a fried dumpling. Mm. Oh, and this is tempura. If you guys don't know what tempura is, that's Japanese for fried. Yeah. David's been here. He. Obrigado, obrigado. A você. Sushi was amazing. The whole thing is awesome. But last stop, we have the gelateria artigianale, which means artisanal ice cream. And here, my friend from the same town where my grandfather was born, Gubbio, she's making crepe the Italian way. So, what is a crepe? A crepe is a pancake. Woo! This is how they do it in France. In France, they lo facciano così. Anche a Italia lo facciano così, no? Ha, boh, boh. <laughs> e, e dopo la Nutella. So if you think the Italians like chocolate, they love chocolate, but Nutella is the ultimate chocolate. Hazelnut. Wow. Super thin, crispy, almost like an Indian dosa. It's really amazing. I'm telling her, I'll just eat like this. And by the way, my uncle was her professor. Oh, 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 oh. oh, so hot. This is the way you eat in Italy. Mmm. What I love about these cups is that they're not crispy. They're super doughy. With the Nutella, super hot. There's nothing like it. Over here we have chocolate fondue, we have gelatos. I'm going to gelato. I'm not gonna have any gelato today. 
but I'm going to finish this. This is Moscato di Trani. This is a dessert wine. The sugar wine in the southern part of Puglia. This is a de leche, de questo posto. Si, di. Trani, Trani, il nome della Oh, you know what you could tell? It's like a nice dessert wine. The thickness, è meglio. Oh, this is, this is a... This is the dessert. Oh, the best. It's not lot sugar. You taste? No sugar. No, not lot. Not like Porto. Porto has no, a lot no, of sugar. No, or, the, or the in Bordeaux, the Sauterne. The Sauterne, the wine on the Bordeaux. This is also... For this is phenomenal. Yeah. This is like the best ever. Just, I, I, I propose you just the, the wine exceptional. The exceptional yes. wines. Yes. This guy's too kind. We, we the one the story. This uh, ladies, we have uh, this uh, Castello. Very for the famous for, the, for this wine. Typical, and uh, she she like very much uh, this type of wine. Yes, yeah. yeah. So the, the owner of the vineyard, uh, she has a castello, so a castle, and she loves this type of wine. I'll tell you, this is one of the best. I'm a dessert wine guy. Oh, I'll take it down. Wow. All right, last stop, guys. Gelato. Gelato is a different type of ice cream. It's like whipped nicely and they pull it out amazingly. Come on, let's do this. It's a cup of piccola, because for me, I can't do it now. I Ah, look at that. Hey, piano, piano. Oh, and this is chocolato. That means chocolate in Italian, chocolato. And you can see the consistency is different from regular ice cream. So they're from my, uh, from my town too. Gubini, incredibile. Okay, dame uno de queste. Let's do this. Grazie. Grazie per questo. Look at that. Questa menta. I'm sharing. I don't care. Chocolata. Mamma mia. Come a la maison. Crazy, yeah? The best. This is the ultimate brunch I've ever been to in my life in Luxembourg. When you're in Luxembourg, be here on a Sunday, 11 a.m. You will love it, 11 to 4 p.m., 59 euros. This is epic. Hey, amico, brindiamo yes. un po' più. Un po' di più. Un po' di più. See you guys soon. I'm gonna drink more. This is the best place on earth. Come a la maison. Come eat in your house. The owner, the staff, everything was epic. We had an amazing time. We spent five hours here. Too good. Andiamo. Andiamo. Let's go back to Brussels. If we see anything along the way, we'll show you. If not, we're going to sleep. Let's go. Luxembourg, it's amazing. It's only about 110 minutes, so like about an hour 40, an hour 50 minute drive to, to Brussels. Beautiful highway, super paved road. And if you want, you can stop at a few different towns on the way, like Nemur or anything else in Wallonia. But for us, we're just going home, we're gonna take it easy. And if we see anything along the way, we'll stop. If not, we just get home and relax. But I'd say this is just beautiful. What do you think, Tassels? Great spot, huh? Beautiful. So after a two hour drive with no stops, we're back in Brussels. That's how close Luxembourg city is to Brussels. Incredible, right? So what I like about Luxembourg? Well, my 100 country, I love it. Super relaxed place. Everything is peaceful, clean. Everybody speaks many languages, super multicultural. You'll speak Italian, you speak Portuguese, French, German, Luxembourgish, even Dutch there. Um, food wise, very, very hearty. They have lots of beer. They have great wine. We went to so many beautiful restaurants, 
uh, walked around the town, very small place, two full days is really all you need but if you want to experience it more relaxed, three days. And yeah, my friends, that is it for us. We are home. I can't wait to just get to my bed. It's early, but I'm tired. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow in and to our bin. Peace.